Good evening. Uh, so I have a slide deck, whatever. I usually don't do decks. I actually much rather have a conversation. Uh, but there is a screen here, so I threw it up, but that gave me a chance to throw a few videos up that I enjoy doing. I am a simple customer service guy. I didn't go to school for marketing. Uh, I don't strive to be a marketer, although I do work in the marketing department. I work under the CMO for Citibank, uh, and I joined them last August. I'll give you a little bit of the Citibank story, but truthfully, social media is about interaction, dialogue. So what I'll also tell you is, unlike most presentations, feel free to interrupt me and talk and you know say, here's what I, I want this, because I'll give you whatever you're looking for out of this presentation. I can care less about these slides. So just to set the tone off that right off the bat. One of the things though you need to recognize is the social landscape. So we're gonna go through a little bit of that and what it's meaning for business. There's a huge change and shift going on and I took part of that at Comcast, but it's happening all over the place. There's also a challenge, and this deck is uh, titled, you know, Bridging the Conversation Divide. And that's one of the biggest challenges for businesses today. You have these conversations that are happening and different parts of the organization handling them different ways, sending different messages out. So we're gonna talk about that conversational divide. I'll give you a little bit of the Citibank story. I might weave in throughout this a little bit of Comcast story, which is uh, stuff that you know I know very well is what we went through. You saw some of those videos. But the fact is, those videos helped change the company in many ways. And so we'll talk a little bit about that and how social media is changing the business landscape. Then, of course, answering your questions, but the fact is I'll do that at any time. So there's no set aspect to that. You all right? All right, let's have some fun. So, social landscape. Conversations are going on everywhere. And, you know, it's a lot of fun when you work for a brand and you start Googling it. Now, you have to remember, every brand is very different. I will also make the case that every industry is different. You know, cable company is going to be looked upon one way. Starbucks is going to be looked upon a different way. And guess what? It might not be that the companies are that far different from each other, but the passion that their customers have, or maybe the perceptions that they create, you know, give them two different feels. So people tend to love Starbucks. What do they feel about the cable company? Yeah, exactly. And banks right now, what do you feel about that? <laughs> exactly. You know, I went from, you know, used to be the cable companies were the most hated. Then I went back to banking. I don't get it. Uh, anyway. But this is all part of reputation. And in some cases, they have nothing to do with it. In some cases, they do. I'm not going to sit and say the cable company and the cable industry didn't cause the problems that they have. I believe they have. The banking industry, I believe they played a big role in the way people feel about them. At the same time, I think there's other factors there that they didn't, that didn't play a role or played a role that they couldn't control. And I'll also say the banking industry, hey, it wasn't there at the time. These conversations were happening here. They're happening in the press. You know, they're happening all over the place. And what did the banking industry do? They shut up. Huge mistake. What I'll be the first to tell you is an open, transparent dialogue tends to do really well. You want a funny story when I was at Comcast? I have a lot of these funny stories, but uh, one of my favorite stories at Comcast was during the Super Bowl a few years back. In Tucson, Arizona, uh, instead of playing the Super Bowl on CBS, the feed changed to pornography. So people who are tuning in for the Super Bowl and were watching it all of a sudden got to see something quite different. Uh, now, what I'll also tell you is typically this is the type of thing, you know, that sleepy tech video that was watched by millions of people over the years and lived on, you know, it's still, if you Google Comcast, it shows up first page. This Tucson and the pornography, the same thing should have happened. One difference. We started talking about it the moment it happened. We didn't know what the hell we were saying, but we were saying, that you're right, that shouldn't have happened. We started talking about it. And, you know, the next day, or you know, what happened, that conversation happened all through the night and into the next day, it made national news, it was all over the place. But we started commenting wherever the discussions were happening. 
Al, I, one of my favorites was, you know, one of the websites, it was, ah, I actually forgot which website it was. Oh, well, one of the, Gizmodo, one of the Gizmodo sites had it in there, oh, some hapless PR sap from Comcast gave us this message. Well, as part of our message, we said, as we have more details, we're going to give it to you. So the next time I came back to that website, I said, hey, this is Frank, I'm the hapless PR sap. Uh, I, want to, I promised you an update, and here it is. From that point, for the next few years, I won friends on that site, a site that typically was not the most friendly to business, all because I came off in a very human tone, and we were very honest and open through that whole dialogue. And to this day, that little incident is not well known. And you know what was also fascinating is the day after that incident, it all, all of a sudden the calls stopped coming in and got really quiet, and we were kind of freaked out by it. About two hours later, PR Week called and said, hey, we want to do a story on how you handled this. And we declined. So now that I left Comcast, I can talk about that story. But anyway, these conversations are happening on friendly sites to your brand and some not so friendly sites. This is a big challenge. This is, guess what? This is about brand reputation. Social media, one of the biggest topics of conversation. Who owns social media? Should marketing own it? I bet you a lot of people in this room would say yes. Should PR own it? That, you know, I'll tell you some of the most successful programs in social media came from PR. I've made the case all the time, neither of them should own it, the customer already owns it. They're just responding to it. You need to understand that fact. This is all part of what I'm going to refer to as the conversational divide that is happening and companies have to shift gears. So as you learn different marketing techniques, you might want to learn new ways to apply it and just think, put yourself in a customer's shoes and see how you feel. So what's going on in the conversational divide? You, know, you do have marketers what are they, and PR, what are they doing? They're saying, hey, we listen to our customers, we're this, we're great, ba 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 ba. You know, please, kumbaya. And then what do you do? You call the company for customer service and what do they have? Eh. Not so great, right? Most companies, I think most companies suck at customer service. And I don't care if it's some of the best brands are not very good at it. There's reasons for it. If you ever want to know the business reasons that created that environment, I'll gladly go over them. I will tell you, now companies have no choice. They must fix it. So that's one of the things that happens in call centers is a lot of stuff they do is dictated by liability. So the legal department has huge say in the way they operate. You know, I need to handle customer in under four minutes. If you've ever worked in a call center, it's all about handle time and they get all freaked out by it. It's not about creating a good experience for the customer. It's got to change. This is not, it doesn't fit the message of the brand. And they don't want ideas because they don't have time for that. They just want to get you on and off the call. You know, that's what they focus on. It's an operational aspect. And it's because businesses never had the right priority. They never, you know, in the call center world, which is my background, the, in the call center world, you know, they've struggled over the years of why they're important to a brand. You know, years ago it was, we're going to turn ourselves into the sales center. and We're going to sell, sell, sell. Wait, your people calling you for actually service. They want help. They don't want to be sold to. This is a you know problem in the way it was led for years. This is going to impact not just the cable companies, it's impacting every brand. And just think for yourself, how do you feel as a consumer when you interact with a business? Cut, companies need to listen to this now. Who do we trust? Yeah, this is from the Nielsen 2010 Global Trust Survey. Family, you know, most of you agree with that, right? You, you talk to people in you, your family, hey, I want to do this, what do you think of this product? You trust their recommendation. You trust friends. This is what cracks me up. We trust product reviews online more than we trust almost even news. It cracks me up where news is on that. But online product reviews. Now, this is funny. Think about this. We don't even know who the heck these people are. And we make our buying decisions based upon that. This is all part of your brand reputation, and you need to understand this shift. <laughs> Another favorite of mine is influential bloggers. You know, if in, when you're in the business world, and you're especially in social media, I hear all the time, we need to reach out to influencers. Why? Well, because they're going to spread the message. Okay. 
if influencers started spreading the message of our brand and trying to sell all the time for all these people coming to them, how long will they be influencers? Give me a break. You know, that's not what we pay attention to, nor do we care. But there's other things much more important. There is a changing consumer and consumer preferences. Now, this actually comes from the 2010 annual report for Citibank. I'm not going to read this, I promise you. But if you ever want something fairly interesting to read, I may have influenced it through my conversations like we're having here. I did not write any of this. The gist of what this, all these words have to say is technology and social media has changed the consumer landscape. And this is true for all businesses. That's what this concentrates on. This is in a section of our annual report where we're giving, here's the state of the business world, not ours. 